For over a century, gold has shaped the fortunes of Southern Africa. The legacy of the gold mining is the legacy of South Africa, and the legacy of South Africa is the legacy of apartheid. You know, people speak about grand apartheid. Well, grand apartheid was underpinned by gold and the migrant labor system. Across the region, millions left for South Africa's gold mines. One in four returned with a deadly disease. Silicosis is known as the silent epidemic. More people have died, more people have been crippled and disabled by silicosis and silicotuberculosis in the South African gold mines over the last hundred years than have been injured anywhere at any time um, by any single industrial cause. This is a, a disaster of massive proportions. I <coughs> 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 These are the deepest mines in the world. Underground, drilling and blasting puts miners at risk. Silicosis is caused by breathing dust from gold-bearing rocks it damages their lungs and is incurable and fatal. Under our law, for the last hundred years, if a man dies of a disease like silicosis, it's an unnatural death. He's died as a result of simple language. He's been poisoned. In the last 50 years, there hasn't been a single inquest into the deaths of one of these men. And we're talking about the deaths of tens of thousands. And not once has there been an inquest. So it's as if their lives and their health means nothing. The, the miners were left in the dark. They were left ignorant. They were sent home without any information. They did not know that they are sick, or if, in fact, if they knew about diseases, how to get benefits from that. Mr. Bukaku Mukiti, who is one of the most severe cases of silicosis because of his lung situation, uh, he resulted uh, in him having problems with his heart, and eventually he had a stroke. And that's when he started to lose his systems, and now he's in this <laughs> epileptic situation. He ended his mining career in proof. Uh, but most of his problems, he says he started here, but he ended his career in proof. In this case, uh, he's actually staying alone. There was death everywhere. 
and it was cold. The food is limited. Mm -hmm. The fires has to be made uh, in the house. And now, considering his situation that he cannot walk, he cannot uh, cut mm -hmm. his boot. It, it, it also creates a, a situation where I thought he might just endanger himself in terms of fire and everything. So it was a bad situation generally. The suffering of these men can no longer be ignored or dismissed. Thirty-two companies that were founded on cheap black labor are now being sued for their working conditions. It's a case that predicts a perfect storm. They were negligent, they were irresponsible, they didn't fulfill the duty they had then and now under law that they owed to these workers. Most mining companies will find it easy to prove that they had rules and standards and trained employees to prevent silicosis. Lawyers are preparing Africa's biggest class action. 100 to 300,000 mine workers will be up against the world's biggest gold companies. We're confident we will win and we're confident that we can achieve a, a good settlement for workers. We're also confident that we can achieve a settlement that substantially, materially compensates people for the harm that they've lost. So the effects of the lawsuit may be crippling. The dilemma with this type of action is you now want to keep the shareholder of today accountable and responsible for uh, alleged evils of the past. Why would the shareholder stick around if he has to pick up 110 years worth of legacy issues? You know, the argument that it's not right or it's not just that they should be forced to pay is quite frankly a nonsense. These companies have made billions in profits and it's only right that their shareholders should now pay something back um, to ensure fair compensation. In October 2015, the Johannesburg High Court will decide if the class action is allowed to proceed. It could change mining forever, but whatever the outcome, it will carry far beyond our borders.